Twinkle, uh, congratulations on your juggernaut of a book plugin. Uh, <laughs> juggernaut of a book. Uh, when, uh, when I was asked to read a passage uh, from the book, I was really excited and I messaged Twinkle saying that I'll bring my bestest English. And uh, Pat came a reply saying that, don't worry, his English is as bad as yours. So just come and read. Uh, so I'm asked to read a passage from uh, The Sanitary Man and a Sacred Land. But before that, I just want to read something which is on the third page of the book, which goes like, For Akshay, each time there is a power cut, you, my friend, always have a flashlight handy. Uh. <laughs> Prashant Batra submitted his story to the Guardian titled, The First Man to Wear a Sanitary Napkin. It was a four-page article chronicling Bablu Kevat's journey from Mohana to Indore. And with that, troops of ruddy-faced journalists wielding straw hats and bottled water, along with the dictaphones, began descending on Bablu Kevat's workshop from all over the world. The Times of India was the first Indian newspaper to feature Bablu Kevat and his unique invention. A half-page story on page six, sandwiched between an advertisement of Syntex water storage tanks and an announcement that wished Sardar Ranga Singh a very jolly birthday, Sarji. Bablu Kevat had started getting famous. There were television interviews where poker-faced anchors not quite focusing on the work he was doing, with non-profit and women's group, kept trying to draw out salacious details of him wearing a pad and leaking blood all over himself. He was invited to speak at universities and companies and conferences across the country. Bablu found himself enjoying these talks. There was one rather memorable experience in Bhopal. It was a packed hall with a panel of dignitaries from around the world and attended by the Minister of Commerce, Industry and Employment. Bablu began his talk by pulling out a sanitary napkin from his pocket and waving it in front of the startled guest asking, how many men have touched a sanitary pad in their life? When no one responded, he walked up to the minister and said, well, sir, here is your chance. Come, hold this. I promise it won't bite. The startled minister looked helplessly around, waiting for someone to rescue him, and with no escape in sight, gingerly took the sanitary pad in his hand. Bablu continued, you're feeling, you're feeling embarrassed holding that pad, aren't you, sir? This shame in discussing menstruation in holding a sanitary pad is one of the biggest hurdles we face. It is as if menstruation is not a natural function, but a sin that women unwillingly commit through their uterus and have to hide away from prying eyes, lest they be declared guilty of the crime of bleeding. This shame is the reason why women take their stained pieces of cloth, wash them secretively, and hang them to, to dry in places where the sun cannot spot them. Then they end up using those moldy, bacteria-laden pieces of fabric and get diseases. Let us all refuse to be part of this game of shame because it is nothing but a losing game for all humanity. The audience was spellbound and couldn't stop clapping. Taking his sanitary pad back from the hapless minister's hands, Bablu added with a twinkle in his eye. And I would like to end my speech by thanking women and the menstrual cycles. Without them, this talk along with our very existence would not be possible. Later, laughing about the event, he confessed to Sarita. Sarita ji, I told them only 10% of women in India used a sanitary pad. Actually, I fudged the number. It is only 5%. I just added 5% more on stage because I did not want to embarrass Bharat Mata so much in front of all the foreigners. What Katrina has acting? Oh, why? She's a hot chickeny. She is a hot chickeny and she's my favorite. क्या कैटरीना ने एक्टिंग करी है? Oh why? कुछ कहना चाहिए कुछ कहना चाहिए. She's hot chickeny. She's a hot chickeny and she's my favorite.